Hi, I'm Tim Wood. I'm the supply pastor of Burwood United Methodist Church in Thompson Station, Tennessee. I'm here tonight with the weekly sermon video from Burwood United Methodist Church. Our sermon topic tonight is, what should we be praying for in times like these? Our scripture reading tonight will be from Romans chapter 8, verses 24 through 27. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. There's no statistic that could tell us for sure that prayer has increased during the pandemic crisis. Of course, the goal of prayer for me is honest, open communication with God. Speaking for myself, it doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes it becomes a one-way communication in which I ask God for things, which at times are mostly for my benefit. I still feel guilty about prayer that turns out that way. For years, preachers have chastised believers to thinking of prayer only in terms of asking God for something for ourselves or in an emergency. That's selfish, we're told. I agree that there should be some balance in prayer. The believer should offer praise and thanks to God. But it had better be sincere, for God looks at the heart. What we might say doesn't determine if we're sincere. It comes from our attitude. It comes from our heart. But let's take another look at the asking part. Looking back in my life, I'm embarrassed about some things I prayed for, and I thank God that the answer from him was no. Sometimes I feel foolish for asking for something from God and spending the time praying for it. Have you ever felt like you have wasted God's time? Well, God doesn't see time in the same sense that we do. So has the pandemic changed the way that you pray? Do your new praying habits make you feel closer to God? I suppose we could never run out of things we could pray for. Each of us has 7.6 billion potential neighbors to pray for. Now we set priorities in prayer, whether we realize it or not. How should we pray, especially now? My answers might surprise you. So here we go. Item number one, pray for the first thing that comes to your mind. The first thing in your mind must be important or it wouldn't be the first thing in your mind to you. If it's important to you, it's important to God. Yes, God cares about the trivial things in your life. The act of bringing them before God often is enough to get those problems out of your head. This thought is related to the next prayer topic, which is item number two, be honest with God. I prayed for things that now look silly but they were important to me then. Don't try to hide anything from God. He knows what you want before you realize what you want. Through the process of being honest with God, you become honest with yourself, and that may surprise you. And God just may answer yes to your honest prayer. Item number three, ask God for permission to be angry. Now, I've got a nasty temper that I keep under control most of the time. That's not the kind of anger you would ever want to show. Now, there's another kind of anger. It's the ability to focus righteous anger into creating acts of justice and mercy. You ask God for permission to be angry, so you are focusing the right kind of anger. Now, Jesus got mad. He turned over tables in the temple. He called the Pharisees a bunch of snakes. Jesus showed righteous anger. Because he was the Son of God, he knew what kind of anger was righteous and which kind was not. Now, item number four, the ability and freedom to grieve as much as we need to. In New York City, families have lost one of the most important ways to grieve, the funeral. At the height of the pandemic's rampage through New York City, the hospitals were terribly overloaded. The remains of the dead were stored in refrigerator trucks parked by the hospitals. If there was time for a funeral, it was limited to 10 people who had to observe social distancing, which is six feet apart, 
and they had to observe that at a time when normally they would want to hug someone more than anything. So when death rocks the world of the deceased, the pressure mounts. There's no time to give grief formally or inside of one's heart. The observation of grief may be postponed. My mother told me that it wasn't until three months after my father died that she cried about it. Was, was she not sad about it? Well, of course she was. My father died of natural causes with no warning. There was no way to prepare for his death, but can anyone truly prepare for the death of a loved one? He left my mother with four children, ages 10 to 16, and two seven-day-a-week businesses to operate. I can see why grieving was postponed. Now, the shock of a horrible loss can put off grieving. It was three months, yeah, there's that three months again, after the 9-11 attacks that I cried. Yes, men cry, and sometimes even men admit it. I had this mental image of New York City firefighters rushing without hesitation into the two flaming 110-story tall buildings. Many of them did not come out of their alive. Grief is part of our survival. By all means, we must pray for the ability to grieve. Now, item number five, pray that we will remember to take care of ourselves. In a crisis, many people selflessly throw themselves totally into helping others. They work to the point of exhaustion. In times of crisis, we need each other more than ever. If we don't take care of ourselves, we can't be there for each other. We all need each other, and we need each other at their best. Item number six. Hey, almost done. Don't let us ignore our pain. We must deal with our pain when it happens, if we possibly can. Everyone has been hit by the pandemic in some way. Some have had it easier than others, but no one has had it easy. Ask God to help you avoid dismissing your pain by saying that others have it worse than you do. There will always be someone who has it worse than you do, sadly. You can be concerned about others without burying your pain, but if you don't bury your pain through the grace and power of God, it's going to come back. And finally, pray for grace, mercy, and peace. Always. Amen.